quarter. We all thought we said, okay, great. Uh, we'll start with seating of alternatives. We have a member missing. So, Melissa, does anybody want to make a motion to seat Melissa as an alternative? I'll move to seat Melissa as an alternative for Christina Milehouse. Okay. Second. Second. All right. All those in favor? All, All right. right. All right. Unanimous. <clears throat> Next, we will do present to speak. Uh, public participation is desired and encouraged. Speakers will be limited to time and appropriateness of comments to maintain progress, stay on the topic, and maintain the decorum. Anybody here to speak? No. Yeah, well, uh, right the Jim Marshall. Uh, good evening, everybody. Um, can you hear me okay? Yeah. Excellent. Uh, Jim Marshall, Fisher Hill Road. Um, thanks for listening in advance. Um, I'm, I just want to say at the start, I'm speaking on behalf of myself and not in any way um, as, as a representative of the CIP committee. Um, but I, I do want to speak about a couple of things. The first is, since you're speaking about uh, the Selectman's budget um, this evening, um, it's I, I admittedly have no idea what's in it, uh, but I would like to continue to push and build on the discussion you guys had at your last meeting in front of the Board of Ed related to a facilities director position. Um, I think it's something that is short-sighted if it's not included in the Selectman's budget, um, because the town, as is evidenced by every CIP meeting we've had over the past months, is in desperate need. Um, so I would really urge, and I hope that the discussion, if it's not included in the budget, that there's at least discussion surrounding it and that we can hopefully move the needle in that direction. Um, and to that end, I was, I, I will have to say that I was very discouraged by some of the comments I heard at the end of the Board of Ed's presentation last meeting, uh, particularly from the chair, um, related to what was proposed as uh, excessive spending or extravagant spending um, with the desire to hit uh, some relative target that really from a townwide perspective the board of ed budget is about as tight as you can make it that's not um contractual spending the big ad there again is for a facilities director which the schools are desperately in need of as is every building in town um the few positions that they asked for that did increase their rate above and beyond the necessary increases in the um special education budget are really very important positions that are quite frankly critical to the school's mission and need. So I really hope that you consider um, the, their requests with um, a higher level of urgency um, and less fear than I, I fear uh, this board is, is going towards. Um, and then third, uh, just to touch base on the CIP need in this town. Um, we had a meeting, you're, you have a year one budget that I admittedly voted for last night after three hours of debate um, with pretty sincere and strong objection and reservations. The need in this town is unbelievable from a facilities improvement standpoint. You're looking at over $30 million of capital improvement need over the next five years, most of which, if not <laughs> bordering on almost all of it, is critical need to maintain the integrity of our buildings in the long term, in the short term, in many cases. We have a fire department operating out of a trailer. It is very short-sighted in the interest of, of making this year one budget and saying everything's okay because it's as close to a perceived magic increase number that Pete is targeting to short change savings for getting ahead of the need. We have a year one budget that shows a minimal increase. We have year two, the budget we approved for year one last night shows a, a minimal increase in year one. We're not planning ahead. Year two, there's a bond that increases, that it shows about an over a million dollar um, cost to taxpayer. That's like over two mils to cover bonds for roads and some fire station improvements. In year three, the capital improvement, um, bucket is in the hole by almost $3 million. In year four, it's $5 million. In year five, it's $7.5 million in the negative. There is no plan that we should not be concerned 
that doesn't address these items that we shouldn't be concerned about. If you want to balance that, there's another um, significant tax increase in year three. There is no avoiding this to get ahead. And if you can't fund it, you guys need to start having serious discussions across the board about which projects you're just not going to fund because you're going to have to cut $20 million out of this out of this process to have a shot at being able to maintain it, we're not going to be able to maintain it's that severe i i know i'm loud generally about this because the need is that urgent i will wave the red flag as often as i can until people start listening um because we cannot get ahead of this by shortchanging ourselves in the short term we can't look at this as a year one budget and ignore years two through five it's irresponsible quite frankly and you know i i hope both the CIP committee, the Board of Finance, and the Board of Selectmen can all work together, workshop, step this up so that we can figure it out without playing games and shell games with the financing in year one. Thank you very much. I appreciate it, guys. Thank you, Jim. Uh, Erica? No. Erica? Hi. Thank you so much. Um, I, I want to share that my concern and disappointment that your board tonight is hearing a Board of Selectmen budget. Um, that one has not been properly publicly discussed by the Board of Selectmen and two has not been voted on or approved by that board. Uh, the process of government conducting business in public is an important step to ensure transparency and holding our elected officials accountable. The continued lack of transparency of our current administration is concerning and a pattern that needs to be addressed. Um, I'm sharing my concerns here with this board um, as the Board of Selectmen has not had a regular public meeting since February 5th, and only one meeting on February 14th, um, where they spent one hour discussing the budget and did not allow public comment. They also um, did not in any way address what the actual figures on that budget would be. Um, the first time the public would hear this um, is potentially at this meeting. Um, and that's not where the public should hear of um, potential impacts on the budget. There should be well thought out uh, discussions and arguments for potential increases or decreases. I certainly know um, more than most how challenging a budget season can be and certainly one immediately following um, a new term election in November. But there was ample time and resources available to assist um, and I certainly hope this board addresses that issue. Thank you. Thank you, Erica. Erica? Yes. For the secretary, could you just identify yourself and your address? Uh, I will identify myself, I, Erica Wyshynski. Um, I will not share my address, thank you. Thank you. All right, anybody else for uh, present to speak? Oh, okay, next okay. we move on to old business. We will review and adopt the revised 2024 to 2025 budget calendar. So everybody should have a copy of that in their uh, packet. The one that's labeled uh, revised combined meeting schedule, it just looks like this without the calendar. It's still incorrect. It should have CIP moved down to March 14th um, and discussion moved up to March 7th. We have to have a presentation and, and start discussion. And then on the 14th, we, we have the CIP presentation. So it's changed on this one though. This one's correct. Okay. So, Let me get together with you at the end of the meeting so I can just get that from you, okay? Oh, sure. So I don't have my copy with me. You don't need it? <laughs> no. Thank you. All right, so can we have a motion to uh, accept the calendar? And the um, meeting schedule will just have to be uh, revised. I'll move to accept as amended or as corrected. Is that okay? Okay, I'll second. All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Unanimous. All right. Next, we will move on to new business, and we will have the selectmen's budget being presented by first selectman Peter Tanaka. Good evening. Uh, first, to address, address uh, Erica, the reason we haven't had a meeting is we haven't had a quorum. Uh, I've had a selectman 
out of the country and one that is working night can't make it at night for a meeting. So as soon as we have a quorum, we'll, we will be having uh, another board of selectmen meeting. We did have one meeting regarding a workshop on this, which is, I believe, on YouTube. Um, on the overall presentation, do you all have this this handout? Yes. Yeah. Um, it was reworked last night. Uh, the CIP didn't finalize their portion until last night. Um, on the overall, the big uh, items that you'll see is the assessors for a 20.34% um, payroll uh, uh, increase. That's primarily due to payroll. We're working on a new, we're currently at the next board of selectmen meeting, I will be asking the board to uh, empower me to rework the contract with the town of Bolton for the payroll. And then the other one that you may notice is the human services. Human services is due to an additional person being added in. They were added in primarily with ARPA money being faded out into town money. Uh, getting into the... Uh, can I or, just ask yes. what you mean about the Bolton payroll? Is that does so, that mean it's likely to be adjusted from this payroll? It's a, it, it, yes. It we don't know yet though. This is our best guess as of this point. Um, there's a training issue that we're going to for the assessor. We're going to be talking about later. As I understand it, we used to pay the payroll and then our section of training separately. Bolton would now like us to include that training in with the contract. So we pay Bolton, Bolton pays for all the training. So we're not sure where that's going to end up and we haven't finalized the uh, contract yet. So this is a, we're putting in our best numbers now. Okay, so it's a, it's a shared I, job and you're figuring out the right. contract. But is there ex an expected 20% increase? Uh, yeah, that 20% isn't all. That 20% is moving another line item into this line item for training. Okay, yeah. yeah. It's not all payroll. Okay. All right. Sorry. That's all right. <clears throat> if I and I'm I'm explaining it the best I can as I understand it, Stephanie. I it's good enough. I've seen. Uh, getting into the more granular levels, um, that's where the assessor services comes in as well. Um, so you'll notice um, one three four three three zero the assessor services. And one three four six four five training and education. We're not sure where those line items end up, and part of the training is for our assistant assessor who needs some basic training. So we're going to have to send her to a fair amount of training here at the beginning. But assessor services going up thirty three percent. That that's the whole thing. That's the the salary and. See, because they, they zeroed out above that? Yeah. All right. Um, moving on to other notes. What's you, driving the increase in public works? Where, let me get that. Um, let's see. Public works. You mind just giving us a page? Yes, seven. Thanks. Page seven. Uh, we're got. We have uh, a big increase in pump uh, pump catch basins. That's the ability to pump the catch basins. Usually, we do half of them every year. This year, Troy would like to do all of them because we had those two major rainstorms of over three inches which watched quite a bit of uh, 
fill into our storm system. And if we get them before they plug, it makes it a lot easier than after. Um, and then uh, tree removal. Tree removal is because we've had two major infestations of insects. Uh, the 10 caterpillars have wiped out our oak trees and the emerald ash borer have wiped out our ash trees. And uh, we need to get those cut before they fall into the roads. And then we have a 200% increase in, in drug testing and CDL physicals. That's a state mandate. They're testing. I, I guess there used to be random tests. Now they're 100% testing on all their drivers. Moving down on public works. Do you want us to ask questions as we go through or no, jump around and come back? Because it's lengthy. Go on. So wait for oh, questions. Go no, you can oh, go ask ahead. Questions. I just wanted to ask, can we split the fiscal year or will everything be ugly and clogged by then? Like, in other words, can, can't we do half the catch base, bases one year before July 1, <laughs> you know, and, the, and then after July 1 so that we're not like... In this year, right? Rather than right. have the whole impact of doubling it. I this it's that this year I don't I think we've already we pumped them last last year for this year for the budget, so it, we'd have to add to this year's budget for that. Yeah, this year we only have right this this year. Yeah, this year we only have um, half right. Yeah, we, we uh, adjusted it so we. Right. Added it in. Okay. Oh, you know what? I think Troy wanted to comment about that. All right. Troy? Yep. But can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay, so with getting with that, so Stephanie, we had some money from like probably I would say like two years ago, we were doing all the basins. And then we did start to split it. So there was some money left over because the way they did the basins. So we had it. So like so we ended up cleaning all the basins last year. They wanted to only because there was still some money allowed from the previous year. So now moving forward, we've spent pretty much all that budget already cleaning the basins this year. So if you were if you were to do half the basins this year, that's all the money that would be allotted would be would just be that there's no more money. We've used all that due to the rainstorms we've had. We've used all the funds for the basin cleaning. So really, we're catching up for the for this year when we went down to half, thinking we could do it every other year, and next year we'll go back to the fifty thousand arena. Exactly. Yes. This year, if you approve the fifty thousand, a hundred percent of the basins will be cleaned. If you only approve the twenty five thousand, like you did last year, that's yeah. only half the base, like half the basins. There's no more to that. That's it. And due to the cost increase for the basin company to clean out the catch basins. It's they've moved their price up to what their daily rate is. Hey, thanks. All right. Troy. Moving on, page eight. Light item 03116682. Snow sand. This is uh for sanding the roads for storms. Uh last year it was at zero. This year Troy's asking for six thousand. That's because he had leftover sand from the year before, but then he used a, a fair amount of it. So this is to replenish the supply. Troy, did you want to speak to that as well? Yeah, basically. So it goes out to a bid. So every year, every two years, we bid out $14,000 worth of sand. So we're using more salt now than we are using sand. So now last year, we did not bid out the salt, the sand. So we didn't have any money for that. This year, I said, we can still, we have, being using more salt, we've still taken a pile out of our sand. So we would haul it ourselves instead of having it go to bid. It would still be used as a local vendor right here in town that us, the public works guys, would haul it ourselves. So that 6,000 would just replenish the sand pile so it basically stays a big stockpile. There is enough sand there now probably for another year or so. So if this did, I'll give it up, need to be cut, then it is okay. The winters have been playing out a little differently now, um, but it was just something to replenish the pile. That's basically it. Any other questions on that, Stephanie? All right. Well, yeah, kind of, because of the growth. 
I mean, and, and so the la we only have one full fiscal year to look at, but we underspent this sand. It was in for 125, 125,000. We spent about 113. Then we upped it to one. No, no, you're looking at salt now. Oh, okay. So that's what I'm looking at. Are we, but I thought he was just finishing up talking about that. Uh, yeah, no, sand and salt are separate. Yeah. Yeah, the sand is just sand. The salt is different. I added the 20,000 this year due to the price increase of salt. And it's the winter, how you play the winter out. So if we have a bad winter, we've had somewhat too mild winter so far. But if you have a bad winter next year and the price of salt increases, you're gonna that is gonna take a hit. And as I found out this year, $140,000 is one load of salt, one fill. So. Okay. All right. Uh, down to the next line that looks real big is the road maintenance asphalt. What Troy's done is he's combined the chip seal, crack seal, and asphalt, and he's zeroed out crack seal and chip seal and put it all in the asphalt line, not because he's planning on using only asphalt, but because the the this way he doesn't have to work the percentages as hard and move stuff from line to line. It all comes out of one, one line item that he can you can handle that. So that would cover all three of them. Is, is that correct, Troy? Yep, so that was, yeah, exactly. So each before there was a line item for say chip seal was like 150, the asphalt was, you know, 200 and crack seal was this. If we combined all of them in, so say this year, I didn't want to chip seal $150,000. and I only wanted to do 100,000. We put that other 50,000 into the asphalt. So it's basically one group of money that we can use for either more paving or doing a little bit more chip seal, vice versa, however it goes. And that 150,000 increase, remember last year they voted on $20,000 for an engineering company to come in and survey the roads. So if we don't keep you know, putting a little bit of money into our infrastructure, the infrastructure is starting to deteriorate. I don't have an issue with the figures per se, but I think at some point the board might want to discuss combining account lines because I really feel like, well, I feel like it's more more trackable and it is, the costs are different for each. I'm kind of not sure that that's as sound budget practice wise as it could be. And I, it's not a compelling argument to me to zoom them into one. Right. Well, if you do that, can I can I speak to that? If you do that, Stephanie, so if you put one hundred fifty thousand dollars in chip seal, and that's what we've been averaging for the like the last four years or so, uh -huh. but with the rest of the money, if there's a hundred thousand dollars left, I can't, I can barely pay with that. I it, it, you're literally doing a little bit of overlays, so that's where that money is coming from. It's not like it, if you budget, if you were to be like, I'll give you five hundred thousand dollars just for strictly asphalt. And then 150,000 no. for chip seal, and then 30,000 for crack seal. Yes, I could see that, but you're not giving enough money into that group. So no, my, pres my presumption would be though that we you could that we would we're smart enough to balance out the lines of the materials for paving overall. You know what I mean? Like we see you're under in one and over in the other. We're good with yeah, that. Yeah, but I just said that if I can't pave. About a mile of roads, about three hundred thousand dollars. There's not enough money there to pave. So if you only put a hundred thousand dollars in asphalt, what what do you want me to pave? Fifty feet of a road? That's where it comes out of. So that's not making it. You know, it's a hard thing. I explained it even last year with it. The more money you give, or the bigger the budget is, then more we can pave. But if you knock it down to only you have that in that line item, I'm down to next to nothing to pave. <laughs> So the point is, we're we're raising the whole the whole set of the whole exactly. materials. Yeah, the whole set of materials line is going up hundred. He's asking for one hundred and fifty thousand dollar increase. So if you added those three together, and then add one hundred and fifty, that would be where that number comes from. Okay. The three numbers I from last year. Understand why you can't do what right. asphalt I, will be in that increase. No, no, I, what, I, you know what I mean. I, Okay. I, I I hear I, I understand what you're saying. The manager might have something to say about it. Right. I don't know if it's if it's uh, if it's just me budgeting, but okay. The next line item that oh I'm sorry, is there any other questions? 
Nope. All right. Uh, moving on to uh, line item 0351127 on page 9. It's a change of uh, $2,800, which looks like a large percentage increase. That's to true up the line for what we're actually spending for temporary help. This is if our, our transfer station guys go out, we bring in, particularly on a Sunday, we bring in one of the other guys and they're coming in on overtime. So it costs us a lot more to fill in on Sundays. And other times, it's, a, it, it's just really a truing up. Any questions on that? Uh, the waste oil antifreeze, uh, we do quite a good job of burning our waste oil to heat the uh, public works garage, which saves us on disposal there. But both uh, waste oil and antifreeze are hazardous waste and need to be trucked out of here, including the amount of oil that can't be burned. Um, Then how going to how do you determine that? What? What can't be burned on? It, it won't go through the burner. Going, okay, okay. <laughs> it, it gets sludgy or something. Is, is that my understanding, Troy? Yes, There's the sludge comes. You can't can't burn gas in that furnace, you can't burn any freeze. So if somebody drops off any freeze gas, um, and plus it's just when people drain their oil, when they dump it into the things, they screen everything. So there is some sludge in the buckets. They dump that into the tank. So the, our furnace can't burn that. The uh, good news is that uh, our employee health insurance has dropped, which is, uh, I talked to the insurance people today. They told us never to expect that again. Um, of less utilization. No, it's the actual cost drop. Right. Yeah, that's what I said. Uh, the, uh, the the board of ed was happy to hear that as well because we're on the same plan or very similar plan, same carrier. Um, the life insurance went up, however, some, and uh, so our general government budget is going up 7.7% as written here. Uh, some of that is, is, is coming from CIP. Our CIP expenditures are up. And as you heard from Jim earlier, it's because it's it's uh, time we take care of some of our buildings. The uh, schools and fire departments are in desperate need. So, there's a expenditure there and some savings going in. They're putting a little bit more towards savings and we were expecting going into the CIP project process, I believe it was 4.8% increase. Uh, CIP wanted to raise it to 10. I thought seven was fine. They ended up at nine. So nine is the increase in CIP. Any other questions? We have a question from Christina. Christina. Oh. Hi. I, oh, I'm sorry. I'm on vacation uh, and I'm in an Airbnb, so I don't have very good Wi-Fi. But um, <clears throat> I just wanted to ask about the, the, the extra time for the transfer station because the actual number right now is already at like 2000 over what was budgeted. So I'm just wondering if it should be even more than than what you did, but also um, what is driving that whole, um, that number? Uh, the, I was reticent to, to put more in the budget than, than Troy asked for, <laughs> and I don't understand the driving the number question. You so so last year or in this current year you budgeted three thousand one hundred and seventy you're already at five thousand seventy eight <clears throat> so you went ahead budgeted six thousand for next year but we're only 
through seven months of this year. So it, 5,078 is probably not the right number for even this current year or for next year. So, but also yeah. just not sure why it would be so much higher. And and the year before it was 6,000. So I'm, I, I think that, you know, that it's, it's, he's going for the average there of what's is going up. And I, I don't know if there's more time spent in the winter covering or not. Christina, that was also too the change in staff. Um, we finally have somebody up there that's, uh, you know, with the oh, staff, it keeps changing. So every time somebody goes away, we have to have a sub, you know, fill in and that's our own staff. So our regular guy works up there on a Saturday, gets overtime, you know, and then on Sunday it's double time. So that's the reason why um, it has was put out a few times. So we went, I believe, almost like two or three months with our own staff um, doing that Why we could replace somebody at the transfer station. So that's why I believe it's so high right now. Okay. So is, do you think that so high here, though, with the remaining months in this current year, fiscal year? You, you were breaking up Christine yeah. at the beginning. It has Chris. potential to go up higher in this current fiscal year. It, yes, yeah. it does. It does. Um, if, it, you know, if our assistant transfer station operator was to leave or find another place of employment or something like that, then we would have to fill in, you know, for that. So yes, it very well could go up or hopefully our employee doesn't leave and it would stay, <laughs> it would stay where it is. Okay. Got it. The new employee had to get out of the army, which was causing him to go to the weekend drills. So that probably caused a fair amount of this. He's now uh, retired from the military. So he's there full time now. And if he has like a sick day or a vacation or something like that with, um, you know, that would be a, a cost where, you know, a, a sub would have to fill in for that. Two other questions. I have a question too. Right? Yeah. You're done. You want to go? Your funny thought about this facility uh, manager job as far as putting it in the uh, the selectman's budget rather than having it in the school. We're considering we have town buildings too that are needed. Yeah, and we, everybody has buildings, and and uh, I, if we have a lot of personnel needs. Uh, for instance. The, uh, public works really needs another worker and I cut that one out this year because we're already at 7.7 .7 and I I can see what our mill rate is going to do this year where we're at so I I did take Jim's consideration of a, a manager into account but I didn't feel we could afford it I had a couple other questions about public works actually sure. And you know, this is not about an increase. Um, I just wondered, um, let's see, like for instance, under bulk waste disposal. So we had it the last full, full year, we had it budgeted for 80,000, we only spent 60. We carried that 80,000 over for the next year. Now we're trending at about 60. So I'm wondering why it needs to stay at 80 if that we could at least take half that difference down and cut 10,000 there because we've got two years of experience where we're trending around 60 for that cost. Troy? I be believe that 60,000 was when COVID. So people have gone back to work now and basically it was just kind of keeping that money. If something ever happened, I guess that's where it would be in there. But I remember going up and hearing because everyone was at home and having a chance to clean out their closets and bringing all their old stuff in. So I know I heard that in a previous budget. Yeah, I, I remember I'm hearing that as well. Maybe it's time to. And, and some I mean, of that is contractual. It's also, too. you know, it's not like we can't tweak it again. And I'm not suggesting take out the whole 20,000 difference. I'm just thinking. Right. You know, sorry. I think, I think. I think that's a decision for this board. It's a reasonable question. Right. It's no, not no, I, about 
we, we kind of focus on the increases, but that's not where all the action is. Right. There should be some savings too sometimes. Right. So, okay. Absolutely. That's all I'm asking. I'm not trying to no, no, no. anyone. No. Um, but there, there's a, this is a big budget. It has grown to be a third of uh, all of our town budgets, a third of the town budget. So if you look at your pie time. chart, pardon me? It used to be half at one time. Really? Yes. Well, it wasn't before though, in the last few years or so. Well, um, in the last several years. And this is a smaller one, but like in, um, uh, I'm sorry, I can't see find where it is. The, yeah, the, the $2,000, uh, not the $2,000 increase, where was it? Oh, general supplies is all. We had it at 3,000, we took it down to 2,000. It's never really, I mean, we're at 70 this year so far, seven months in. So I'm just wondering why we're keeping Wait, it. Which line item are you wanna have? It's under transfer station, general supplies. Oh, okay. I mean, you know, it's just, it just sort of, does it need to be that big and round of a figure if it's not, if we're really not spinning to that I don't degree. know, Troy. And Troy, can you speak to that? I know that we just got a uh, office manager for public work, so that that line item, but it, that's for the transfer station. You're, you're saying specifically for the transfer station. Yeah. And yeah, I, I, mean, I mean, we're trying to be careful with spending up there too. So I mean, there is some repairs that need to be done around uh, dumpsters and stuff. There's some fencing that's done. We've had some electrical work that needs to be done. Um, so yeah, that's still. I, I mean, it's been dropped, and I understand there's only seventy dollars, but we still have a few months before the end of the year there. Um, right, but that would be under maintenance. What you're describing this is called general supplies, so it's a status quo mm -hmm. ordering supplies to operate. Just, just looking for things there, because there, you know, then there the increases are more likely if we can do that. So. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of just going along with that. I mean, that's, yeah, I mean, if that's, and take $1,000 out of it, then, I mean, much of a difference that will make, but it's kind of just going with it. Any other questions? Okay, I'll sit down. Thank you, Peter. All right, so next on the agenda, we have correspondence. Do we have any correspondence? Uh, then there's present to speak. Public participation is desired and encouraged. Speakers will be limited to time and appropriateness of comments to maintain progress, stay on topic, and maintain the quorum. Do you have anybody for present to speak? Ralph? Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, 47 Village Hill Road, Ralph Tullis. Uh, I, I have a question about public works budget, and hopefully uh, our first selectman and, and, and Troy can uh, explain where we're at uh, on the Schofield Road drainage. Um, that was discussed last night at CIP, and one of the comments that came out that kind of made sense, since we have a, a lot of equipment for good equipment for public works, why we couldn't start at the bottom and, and gradually do uh, Schofield Road with the town crew rather than um, taking the entire stretch of Schofield in one shot by a contractor and the associated dollars. But the thing is, we need a, a comprehensive plan of how this is going to be done because that system is going to collect a heck of a lot of stormwater and it has to go somewhere. That's a very congested development. Those are small lots, one acres uh, for most of them. You're going to run into problems trying to route that water off the road because you cannot bring it all the way down to the bottom and dump it on Route 32. Uh, and, and if you were to attempt to do a system like that, it, it's going to get really, really costly. However, to get drainage easements across these small lots, it's going to be a bit of a challenge from a legal and financial perspective. And the one thing I hate to see 
is anyone resorting to eminent domain to achieve a project like this? Which is why having money in there to get a comprehensive, um, it's not gonna be 100% accurate, but a comprehensive plan as to how to do this. So if we have the opportunity to do it incrementally, we could do so, but we can't start at the bottom without knowing what happens all the way up. So a plan is necessary. So maybe, maybe that's in the works. Maybe I've missed that. Uh, and I'll I'll end it there for now. Thank you, Ralph. All right, uh, Jim Marshall. Jim? Hi again, everybody. Um, yeah, Jim Marshall, uh, Fisher Hill Road again. Uh, look, I, you know, as much as I understand how difficult the budget season is going to be this year, the reality is it's going to be difficult for every year moving forward. Um, or we're going to continue to degrade um, our infrastructure items like what Ralph is talking about. Um, just keep getting put off. I think those roads have been on the CIP plan for 15 years. Um, it long predated me, but fire stations have been there for 20. One is now falling apart. The schools are hundreds of years old. The everybody when the school referendum failed last year, we got pushed into a plan where we have significant repair needs. And as much as Pete is hesitant to increase the mill rate here by adding something like a facilities director. It is the only way we start making inroads at these projects is if we start saving now so that we're not financing everything. And I, I, I mean, in all honesty, I think both parties ran on finding responsible ways to improve our infrastructure here in town. I believe that was on the Republican ticket. I know the Democratic ticket also ran in the same boat. We have to start, now's the time to start stepping up and getting the job done and it's going to hurt and nobody's gonna like it and I don't like it. I don't like being the voice of, you know, <sighs> of doomsday at every meeting, but it it really is that, that dire. Um, so thank you again, guys. I just, I hope you take it as seriously as um, the need is. Thank you. Thank you. Erica. Thank you, Erica Wyshynski. Um, I echo Jim's sentiment. Um, there really needs to be a serious discussion about a facilities director. Uh, it's something that we know we need. We cannot run from the problems that we have. We need to address them now. And I'm a little disappointed that no one on this board um, asked the question to the first selectman as to whether or not this budget we'll see major change once the board actually has discussions about it and brings you back a number that they voted on. Thank you. Uh, Michelle? Michelle? Yep, can you hear me now? Yep, can you just identify yourself and your address? Sure, Michelle Doucette Cunningham, 41 Liska Road. Um, I wanted to um, agree with uh, what Jim Marshall had said earlier. Um, and put it in the perspective that we have had artificially low tax rates in this town for years because we have kept them low by neglecting our infrastructure. The hens are coming home to roost. We've seen that in the needs for infrastructure across different departments. And because of that, we're going to take, we're going to have to take a big hit this year in yeah. order to start addressing this. And I want to encourage all of you that um, I know that's going to be a hard decision for you to make because all of you are taxpayers too, but um, you should know that it's more important that we fix the failing infrastructure now than we continue to kick the can down the road and it's only gonna get more expensive in the long run. So I would rather see um, a, a tax increase this year of a substantive amount that's not huge and have it start the process rather than wait two or three years and then have a, a much, much larger increase over time. Um, you have that shock absorber process of making the impact less by starting now. So no matter what the actual number is for CIP, start saving money now because we know we have to address these things. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. 
Right, do we have anybody else for present to speak? Peter? Hi, Peter Wilton, Junction 97, Trask Road. Uh, I would like to uh, comment on the budget process um, and disagree with some of the previous comments. Um, I think it's easy to criticize the past, um, but I would submit to, to you as a board that this town over the last half century has done an outstanding job managing its infrastructure. It built a number of additions to its schools, its firehouses, to its town office building. We managed to arrive here just fine. Um, and we'll continue as we have in the past moving into the future. We don't have to do everything at once. And I encourage the board to look at the past and how Willington has managed these things. We don't have large tax increases. We don't take on debt. We manage our fiscal affairs very prudently. Um, and there's no reason we can't continue to do that. <clears throat> I think this board correctly identified early in the process that there are a large number of capital requests this year and is looking for the operational budgets to be managed to support that. I'm not seeing that yet, but I know it's early in the process. I have confidence in this board that you could offset one with the other. Uh, I would also encourage you as you're looking at the capital projects to recognize the town had an understanding when we completed our last large capital project, the library, that we would not take on new bonding commitments until that bond was retired because we're a town that does things in a gradual way. Um, and there are two years remaining on that bond. That might be the appropriate time in year three to consider additional bonding for projects. But again, I encourage this board to evaluate the projects brought to you by CIP and prioritize the town's needs and coordinate that with the operational budgets so that we can have a reasonable increase and plan for our future. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have anybody else to speak? All right. Good and well there. Mm -hmm. oh, I will. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. I appreciate that because I've lived here my entire life. I love this town. And if you want to put a year on it, it'll be 44 years Monday. And nobody has a greater understanding of this building than me because I grew up right over there. We do an incredible amount with very little resources. And that's due to our citizen volunteers and our government through, across the board. This is a, we, we've done a, an incredible amount. We should really be thankful for the amount of resources that we have in this town for not a lot of money. And our low taxes are very attractive. Um, thing, I don't, um, thing for them to actually live here. Anybody that doesn't agree with that, pack your bag and move to Mansfield. Thank you, Jeff. <laughs> Do we have anybody else please, that would like to comment? Do we have a motion to adjourn? No. no. I'm wondering. I'm, I'm just sitting here thinking, oh, come on, it's not even eight o'clock. And we have a whole lot of serious discussion, discussing to do. And I'm just, you know, and, and obviously there's a lot of comments reflecting that. And I'm just wondering, are we going to you know, adjourn in under an hour and uh, not take advantage of a little time to talk about some of this, well, some we, of the things we're raising. You, you know, is anyone seeing areas of the budget that uh, that in their minds deserve a lot of debate? Or are we going to just come in on the last night and say, you know, take it down to, you know, 2% overall increase and that's it? Because well, I don't be, think that's a good be way to do two it. We're going to be having evenings of discussion. Next week, we're doing discussion. We're doing discussion the following week. 
uh, with presentations, so not not the full meeting on discussion. Yeah, well, there's just two. We have, well, we have the revenue the, presentation, yeah. and then we have the DOC the next, yeah, the next so, week. Yeah. yeah, and then the week after that, then we'll have the appropriations. Um, what I've done to try to streamline everything, I've talked to Donna, so we're going to be splitting up discussions. For all the ones with <laughs> increases, they're going to go first so that we can get those you know out of the way. And then we'll be going on to the bigger ones, which are the Board of Education, the firehouses, and the Board of Selectmen in the library. I would just caution us to be concerned with budgets that maybe have more assets and have a smaller percentage increase, may have more room for flexibility. They may have some lines because we tend to look over in the, you know, what's the highest percentage increase and we zero in on those. Even if it's, you know, a thousand dollar account, we talk about that, you know, that's not the, the only thing to look at there. The, you know, if we're underspending in some areas and have classically underspent in some areas, that's a, that's an area to look for some relief. I, for one, am, um, am very much um, in favor of a facilities manager in the education budget, because as articulated, it's a short term I'm not saying short term, like in, in terms of years, but it's a task oriented position. It's the way Phil described it. It's it's it would be communicated up front that it's for the period of time when we're in heavy repairs in the schools, which is likely to be for several years, but not for 20 years or this is the job you retire in necessarily. And I think that makes a lot of sense. It's facile. It's it, it's timing wise right on because. We have these projects that are time related to go for HVAC grants and roofing grants. And uh, I think, uh, you know, he's got things rather teed up to, um, to launch early in the CIP plan. And I just, I think that uh, that's the kind of thing that we ought to be discussing because rather than just kind of come down to the point where we just sort of surprise everyone with what we're privately thinking, this is our chance to, to talk together and debate together. And I, I'd like to know what people are thinking or which which areas they think are, um, are you know, prominent for cuts um, before we get to the end game. Um, I, I think the facility engineer is woefully understated what, what a good one would cost in that, in that price. Uh, I think the only people you might have a chance of with that is a retiree or or uh, somebody young that doesn't know anything yet. I, I, we hire people all the time where I work. I know what we're paying people right out of college. And that number that I see there is kind of laughable for an experienced person in that role. Um, that's that's, the, that's a salary without the benefits, but I, yeah. And the benefits, yeah. But, you know, the salary is the side. I know what the starting salary is. The mm -hmm. benefits always come with a job. Mm -hmm. But you know that what, what you get paid in the in the right. check is what you know you come home with, and uh, that is not like what a professional facility manager would be. No, paid. I understand what you're saying. I think, it, uh, but I do know from years of working with Phil on budgets, I do know he's the type of person who probably has costed this out as people in the industry certainly been dealing with construction and quotes for years now because in the absence of any facility management in town um my guess is he he looked around and got a figure or two got some quotes talked to some people in the know for what a generalist would be which is how he described it when he did his presentation i wouldn't reject it I you know I wouldn't reject it if it's a little off in that sense versus a concept altogether because they did plug in enough to do it they believe is correct if it's you know I guess I would give him a little bit of a mm -hmm. uh, I give him the respect of knowing that he does his his uh, his homework when he's when he's adding to a budget or when he's recommending an addition. Yeah, I talked to a building contractor about that figure, and he says that the roofers that he has working on his job get paid seventy five thousand dollars. Those are the roofers. He said to have somebody who could come in as a facilities director. Mm -hmm. He said you're going to spend significantly more money than that, maybe as much as twice as much as you know what they were considering to allow for that. 
Well, you then take into account on top of that the benefits. And maybe we need to cut down a couple of uh, BP line items and and throw some more money to them. Because I'm just saying, I think it's a necessity. They're putting a number down there. I don't. I would not reject it because it's it's considered, you know, a few thousand off or whatever. Um, that's my thought. We, I'm just we, using that as an example. See, I just think we have a lot of big things we to can't talk about. That number that we're talking about for salary, if we combine it with other boards or committees or whatever, if they had beefy line items that we could cut down and take from their budget. Like everybody has said, the entire town needs the facilities manager. Why not have all of the departments in town pay for it? Right, but the point would be if he, you know, and maybe that's a that's a an idea for a staging it in. Start out with the schools. Let that let let that go. Let Pete, you know, um, sort of weigh in on on what the expansion would be, and if you know, if not that person, then a person who's a fuller fledged facilities manager. But I think for starters. It makes sense. I just feel like we're going to need it with the with the heavy lift mm -hmm. on what the roofing, HVAC, and solar would take for this for both schools, <clears throat> both schools that are that are aged. So um, I, I agree with that. I, I just don't want to see it become a permanent position across the town. I, 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 I the biggest fear is having a person in an office union position with nothing to do yeah, that, that can't be a union job so that can't be a union job can't be a union job can't be a union job that's not that role well yeah. oh, i know that yeah. but, so but my big, that's the thing is have you, once you're once you fix finish it there's a period of time mm -hmm. after you finish it you get back on track what do you really think it's a small town what do you really need it <clears throat> I, I like the idea that it is kind of a phil had kind of a spot Contract based, I think he was kind of going towards. You, know, you have a you know, for these certain projects that you're not, you know, you can't speak. Um, how do you find that person if it's the right amount? I under, I, I, I understand exactly what you're saying. Well, I, I see these things all the time. I, you know, maybe you get lucky with a retiree. Private industry, you wouldn't, you wouldn't find someone for that. Retirees private. are not about the only people that want to work right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm. But, yeah, it, it, I just don't want to see it just a, a um... I mean, I think you can look <laughs> throughout town hall and find people in positions that in the private sector would make a heck of a lot more. That's just the nature of the animal and the nature of the fact that we're a town of 5,500. So um, I just feel like we, we, we have to jump in. This to me is a reasonable way to jump in. Um, it is. It's a thoughtful way to jump in, and I guess I trust the superintendent to do it, and the board of ed. They've already, they've already researched it and and put it out there, and they're obviously motivated. Um, and Phil's um, original uh, budget, he didn't even allow for that. It was the board of ed themselves. That it threw in the facilities director along with a couple of other positions. And that helped uh, balloon that budget from around 5% to around 6.5%. And that still didn't even ask for any of those positions. <clears throat> I think he's been pushing that for quite a while because he knows at some point he's, is he on the call by any chance? He knows at some point that uh, he's going to be. He, as he said in his presentation, said, I've been doing a lot of this work. It's not part of a, a normal superintendent job, but he's been doing it, he, you know, to a degree, but he's, 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 it's, it's, it's over. It's not what he's trained to do. It's time for someone with the expertise of doing that to come in. And we know that, we know that town-wide, everybody's been saying it for couple of decades it feels like so no, the school staying. facilities are the greatest need right now right yeah. and we'll wait for christine's report to see what cip is going to throw towards the schools 
That was just an example. Is there any any anyone else is like saving up to say on March 14th or something? I mean, I'm just thinking we're supposed to be having these discussions in in person together. You know, we don't we don't have everyone around the table who's normally here, but um, we have um, have them online. And uh, is there anyone else who wants to? Um, jump into the volcano's eye like I just did. What was the comment on transfer uh, the human services? It's going way up. The ARPA okay. funding paid for the extra position at one point. Now yes. it's becoming part of our payroll. Right. Correct. Did we plan on that when we do ARPA funding? It's going to end at some point. Yeah, I believe it was planned for, yes. Do it. it was. It was known. Let's put it that way. It was yes. definitely no. Almost thirty-five grand extra. Right, right. right. And, and we just do it, and we knew we were going to have an extra body at some point that we had to pay for. Well, it was the yeah. ARPA commission was was yeah. uh, Christina. Do you? Is she still on? Um, she was chairing the ARPA commission. The ARPA commission was well aware that uh, that they they should not do too many things that go, went into the realm of affecting the operating budget into perpetuity. So, <laughs> i.e. something like this. And this is, to my mind, the only the only real exception um, on ARPA where they did this. But they were in a situation where the senior center uh, person who was opening, you know, unlocking the doors and running the senior center um, during the day was uh, a longtime volunteer who was in her 90s and she stepped down and that so th they did not have volunteers who stepped up to sort of take over that big of a job because it was like 25 hours or something a week and um so the decision was let's use the arpa money you know winnow it down have the town sort of pick up a share and then grow into, into this. Um, I don't know how long that process was because I don't think the hire was immediate. So because they went through it, they posted and interviewed and everything. It, am I describing it correctly, Donna? Yes. What can you add to what that? What I can add is when the position was proposed to ARPA, that it was like part time, like 15 hours a week. And it was like really entry level, like minimum wage job. But by the time the person was hired, it got to be a position in the union and it got to be, you know, more than entry level pay and more hours. Of course. So, um, you know, we have a, have a little bit more expense than we first thought that we would have when we came to our book. The governor had commented the other day about how UConn took a lot of that ARPA money and they used to create new positions. He said that he thought it was irresponsible because once that ARPA money runs out, then you're going to be paying for that out of your budget to maintain those positions. And it's the small, same thing with some of the communities here. Mm -hmm that created jobs with that money, knowing that that money was going to dry up and it was going to have to come some, from someplace in the end. And it comes out of the taxpayers to provide for those uh, those services or um, the uh, salaries of the people that you've taken on. Um, I, that may, I, I don't know about the pay. The pay I think, I'm sure the pay probably went up in the process, but I think the hours were always what my recollection was when I was watching ARPA, the hours were always at 25 or around that. It was at 22 hours at 20. ARPA, and then and now it's at 25. Okay, thanks. It just went up three but, I thought, but it's not like it went from 12 hours to 25. No, it's, it yeah. went from 22 to 25. Thank you. Yeah, and the rate per hour went from 15 to 22, almost $23 an hour. <clears throat> So, yeah. do you know when that union contract expires on that position? Well, the position is in the contract, and you know, the three year contract is ending June 30th. Okay, 
Yeah, it, it would be nice to see the uh, people over at the senior center, their board, discussing the possibility of having the volunteer take that position over again, because they were able to come up with one before. There's no reason they shouldn't be able to now, especially, you know, you go over there for some of their events, and it's like all of the residents over there are involved in what goes on at those events. Um, rather than expect that, though, given that it's off and running, um, maybe it's maybe there's more potential to trim the hours. It just makes more sense for me to talk about things that actually have significant money behind them rather than thousand dollars, you know, over and over. That's how it always goes, Walt. Well. <laughs> it just, I keep <laughs> around for like a. <laughs> Nickels and dimes. Yeah, I, I, yeah, but big, big amounts make sense to have real discussions about to me. And then you find out if something's kind of grew, you know, as we just found out when you ask a couple of questions, it's just interesting. I'm not criticizing anything, it's just it's interesting to me how things evolve. Yeah. If I was given a budget presentation of private industry, I get a lot of hard questions on, on things and like you may have to explain them and yeah, justify them and you gotta you know and you really start looking bad real quick if you don't have good answers. Are you going to go back to presence of feet once the or we never really left it, so <laughs> well, I thought you did because you know you went to adjourn the meeting and then Steph. Stepped in, so I'm yeah. not quite sure. Well, I, mean, I just sort of, point. I yeah. just sort of thought, let's um, use our yeah. time. I mean, we're all here, and yeah. something. Yeah. We have a lot of work yeah. to do, and all right, go on. Okay, John Blessington, Twenty Nine Mason Road. Just something I'd like uh, the board to consider. If you do go to the facilities manager, uh, I think you're going to want to have the board of selectmen hire someone for the whole town because if you if the board of education hires one he will belong to the board of education and that's going to be his primary focus and the rest of the town is going to be sort of ignored uh so i think you would really want to want some to want to be over all the uh the whole over the whole town thank you thanks john and I just want to remind the board that we asked that question when we heard the Board of Ed um, presentation and the answer what, from the superintendent was uh, that he would have no problem whatsoever growing, yeah. growing into a partnership role with the rest of the town in facilities management. So. But at the end of the day, it affects the bottom line of the town, whether it's in the education, you know, mm -hmm. that budget or the selectmen's budget, the same it's effect. The same so what... It just makes more sense to me to have more responsibility on the job, pay it appropriately. Yeah, it can be done. Ready to do that. So. Any other comments? Could we have a motion to adjourn? Yeah. adjourn. <laughs> Do we have a second? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those not? You can't vote no. You can vote actually. Not under motion to adjust. Robert's rules, buddy. I want to stay here.